It's Wednesday of Holy Week. Thank you for joining me, Turning Point Church. It's good to see you virtually by Zoom meeting, Facebook, or catching the sermons online. Do you ever feel like things aren't going according to your plan? God doesn't feel that way. We're going to consider today how all is going exactly according to God's plan on Wednesday of Holy Week. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, we pray that your spirit would guide us as we open your word. Help us to discover something new as we consider your words for this day. So I'm Grant Tibbetts, one of the elders for Turning Point Church, and it's my pleasure to bring you some thoughts regarding these passages selected from the gospel centered on the activities that we believe happened on or about this day. There is a battle that we're looking at this day, a battle that remains unseen to most. As with all history, Jesus stands in the middle of this battle and he holds the strings that extend from the beginning to end, you might say Genesis to Revelation. There are a host of players in the battle today that are busily working, on the one hand, a thickening plot to kill him versus a host of his followers who are helping him to prepare. These preparations are made by the disciples to ready the pieces for the Passover, crucifixion, burial, all in accordance with God's plan. Neither group completely understands what's going on, nor the forces working behind the scenes through them. In the description for this post, you'll find probably on this side that uh, our passages come from Matthew 25 and 26, Mark 11 through 14, Luke 20 through 22, and John chapter 12. On this day, we find in Matthew, Jesus doing what he's often done, teaching, most often in the temple. And we find stories throughout the Gospels about what he was teaching. We learn in Luke 21, 37 and 38, that each day Jesus was teaching in the temple and each evening he went out to spend the night on a hill called the Mount of Olives. And all the people came early in the morning to hear him at the temple. The difference in this teaching versus previous teachings of Jesus is he knows that these are his last public moments to teach his people. This week, he shares a burst of messages that are like a greatest hits list. I encourage you to read through them today. We'll see them in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. His parables include the 10 virgins regarding preparedness, taxes, rendering to Caesar, which is about authority, the widow's offering, which is about generosity of heart, bags of gold, which are about talents or gifts that we use to serve God, and sheep versus goats regarding the judgment. He also covers authority, resurrection and marriage, the destruction of the temple, and warnings for the teachers of the law, among which we have from Mark 12, the parable of the vineyard owner versus the tenant farmers, who ultimately reject his ownership, abuse the messengers that were sent, and ultimately kill the son. We see Jesus referring to himself prophetically in this uh, quote taken from Psalm 118 regarding these builders and connecting this passage to himself. He says, haven't you read this passage of scripture? The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. So in his sharing of this uh, passage with those hearing, which included the uh, teachers of the law, he was scolding them. The Jews had already abused the prophets after 400 years of silence in, in, in God's word to his people, after, after those prophets' uh, voice ceased, God sent his own son to the vineyard and they would kill him. But this was all in accordance with God's plan. So Jesus records his greatest hits. Coming right after he raised Lazarus, he's packing in final public words to packed audiences, the words that God wants his people to hear directly from his son, who will soon become their Passover lamb. He even tells his disciples this directly in Matthew 26 from verse 2. As you know, the Passover is two days away, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. So while Jesus is communicating God's word to the people, we just see the story start to flash back and forth in Matthew 26. Between these two groups, uh, those supporting and those opposing uh, what he's doing, the first group actively oppose him. These are the Sanhedrin, the ruling council, the teachers of the law. And as Tim taught last week in John chapter 12, they were dismayed that the whole world had gone after him. 
their authority and power were directly threatened, and this fear turned to anger and action. Their fear was a bad motivator. Do you think your fear is different? The plot thickens. From Matthew 26, 3 through 5, we see, Then the chief priests and the elders of the people assembled in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and they schemed to arrest Jesus secretly and kill him. But not during the festival, they said, or there may be a riot. More fear, secrecy, but this gave team Jesus time. The second group, Jesus' disciples and followers, included among them a woman who anointed him with a very expensive perfume, typically used in preparation for burial. This was a beautiful picture that many did not understand. Maybe she didn't either, but the preparation is ongoing, all in accordance with God's plan. Now, the first group is hatching its conspiracy. Their plot thickens in Matthew 26, 14 and following, where he says, Then one of the twelve, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and asked, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him over to you? So they counted out for him 30 pieces of silver. From then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. Back to the second group, Jesus' followers are now further preparing, and several of our Gospels give an account that highlights Jesus' instruction to his disciples to go to a particular place and meet a particular man. That man turned out, was there, and had a room available for them to celebrate the Passover together, just as as Jesus foretold. This was a short-term prophecy filled almost immediately, and they found uh, trust in this. The disciples went ahead with the plan, ongoing preparation for this, which would become their last supper, all in accordance with God's plan. Now, of these two opposing teams, I want you to note that Matthew 26 juxtaposes their stories on purpose. Their stories are intertwined, but each team is not pure. We know among Jesus' disciples, we had Judas, one of the twelve. He had just cut a deal with the plotting priests. This was a fulfillment of prophecy, but there were some secret agents on the other side too. There were leaders among them who became part of the story, paying for uh, embalming materials and even a grave for Jesus as they emerged from hiding at the end. In John chapter 12, we learn about them, verse 42 and following says, Yet at the same time, many, even among the leaders, believed in him. But because of the Pharisees, would not openly acknowledge their faith for fear that they would be put out of the synagogue. For they loved human praise more than praise from God. We know from other passages, Zacchaeus and Joseph of Arimathea were among these with a foot in both worlds, choosing in the end Team Jesus. So which group are you in? Are you among those hatching a plot to foil the will of God? Perhaps you're all in, a follower of Jesus, engaged fully in preparing for his coming. Or maybe you're a bit of both, a foot in each world, trying to rise above your love for human praise. Either way, all goes according to God's plan. I hope you'll find yourself on Team Jesus at the end. I encourage you today to look for yourself in these two opposing camps. Both unknowingly work towards the unexpected, sacrificial, terrible, but beautiful will of God to rescue his people by giving himself. And as you read these final public teachings of Christ, and we move tomorrow to the more intimate conversations that he has with his disciples in the upper room as they celebrate the Passover, whether you're walking in accordance with God's will or opposing him, Which team are you on? God is sovereign. His will is accomplished in the events of Holy Week and every week. The same Jesus speaks to us from these pages. He was present at creation, Genesis 1. He was present when God promised to crush the serpent's head in Genesis 3. And he fulfills that promise when he puts sin itself to death on the cross. Now, the enemy's stay of execution is temporary. And this same Jesus, whom they are about to crucify, rose, and he's coming back. Thinking through the parables in our readings, in what way do these speak to you? I hope you find yourself walking in joy, not fear, this week, as you look not on our present circumstance, not on temporary quarantines and pestilence, but into the eyes of a sovereign God, and all will go in accordance with his plan. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, time in it this morning. 
And I pray as these consider the passages that we have uh, for them today, that they will find something new and draw closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great day, Turning Point. Enjoy those passages and your reading today.